Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt. Welcome to another plug-in knowledge session. In this video, we're going to have a look at Slate VCC. So firstly, if you're new to the channel and my videos and you like what you see, click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, Click the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos as they come out. So first off, this video is one of my older videos from my website that hadn't quite made it to YouTube. So VCC or Virtual Console Channel from Slate Digital is a uh, console emulation plugin. It comes as modules as a part of their VMR or virtual mix rack. Now I don't own everything in their virtual mix rack, so that's why I'm focusing on this. I own this plugin because I bought it in the days before virtual mix rack. So I naturally got it uh, included when they went to the virtual mix rack. And it's something that I use on pretty much all of my mixes. I like to build my mixes around emulating a, a hardware console like an SSL e-channel console. And this is part of my solution. I add this to say the UAD SSL e-channel and I'll place this on every track at the start of the track, set it to the SSL uh, mode, 4000 mode, and it adds, or is supposed to add, the analog warmth and analog characteristics of the mixing desk. Now, I actually like what it does to my mixes. It is very subtle if you just listen to it on one track, but add that little bit of subtleness on every single track, every single bus, and it all adds together and brings everything together. As I said, it's very subtle. You could get this plug in and go, I don't hear any difference. But I personally do, and I like using it, whether it's believable or not, hey, that's another thing. I don't own the original hardware, so whether the emulations are accurate or not, I don't really care. I just like what it does to my mix. I like the way it pulls it together. I like that it adds this little bit of analog warmth or emulation to it, and that distortion or harmonic content, whatever you get out of the plugin that adds to it. I like that, and it's just the process that I've been using for a long time and I just keep doing it. So the plugin itself emulates uh, six mixing desks, uh, two SSL, uh, a Neve, an API, a Trident, and a tube-based console. So each one of them is supposed to sound a little bit different and give you the characteristics of each one of those mixing desks. Now you can do what I do and you can set your entire mix up to emulate one or you can break it up. You can put different ones on different tracks. You could have a Neve on the guitar, uh, an API on the bass, and an SSL on the drums. You can do whatever you like. There are no real rules. There's obviously a standard that people do, but you don't have to be locked to that. It's whatever you want to get out of it. So there's not really much to do in this plugin other than basically dial in what you want, set and forget it, that's the best way to work with this one is you put it on at the start and you just ignore it. It's there, you mix, you leave it alone. So let's just get into it and I'll show you what it does. So the virtual mix rack obviously contains these plugins and you can stack multiples, you can do ABs, all of that sort of stuff there. You can turn them on or off, etc. So these are supposed to work hand in hand. So normally when you're doing a mix, you would put the virtual channel across each of your individual audio tracks. So for instance, your kick, snare, your bass, your guitar, vocals, they would all sit on there. Then the next step where all of that stuff comes into a bus or multiple buses, however you set up your template and your mixing session, you would then put the mix bus on the next level. So on your buses and or on the very last mix bus channel before the output. So the way I set it up as sort of described already, 
I will actually place the virtual channel on every single one of my audio tracks in a mix. So I'm trying to emulate as if I was running a mixing board. I always place it in the first slot on each of the tracks. So basically it's sort of in emulating that the analog signal is coming in to the mixing desk, which is this. It's getting the characteristics of the mixing desk. And then, then I would start adding some EQs, compressors, whatever I need to do there. Then it then flows into the, to the next layer, which would be a bus. And depending on, like I said, depending on your template, you may have additional buses. So in my case here, I have all my drums, individual tracks going to a drum bus, guitars going to a guitar bus, etc., And then those buses then go into a main mix bus. You might take all of your individual tracks straight to a mix bus, whichever way you do, it doesn't really matter. But what I would do is then on the first insert on those buses, I would then put the virtual mix bus version. Now, if you want to emulate a particular mixing board, then I would have all of the virtual channels and all of the virtual mix buses set up to the same type and same sort of settings so that I was getting the same impact. That's not to say you have to do that though. If you like the sound of a particular board on a particular type of track, there's nothing stopping you having one type on your guitars and another type on your drums or even just individual instruments. You could have one type on the snare and a different type on the kick. There's obviously no rules with this. You can do whatever you want. So let's start by having a look at the VCC here and the controls. So we have a VU meter here. We have a little control here, but by default it's set to minus 18 dB. So it's indicating that the zero marker on the VU is minus 18 dB. So if you do gain staging, then that is handy to know. When I set these plugins up, usually by default, I try to use clip gain to get my tracks so that they're hitting about zero VU on this plugin. So that way, what I'm trying to do is get the most out of this plugin, the most character out of this plugin without going into distortion. Now, you can, because this is emulating analog hardware, push this up into the red to force some sort of analog distortion to happen on your track. So that's something definitely worth checking out because it may impart some really nice distortion that you find works great on an individual track, or you might want to back it off. So you can do that with clip game, which is the way I do it, but you can also do it by controlling this input control. So this is pretty standard for any sort of control. As we turn it, we can go negative if our signal's a bit hot, or we can go positive. So we also have an output control here, and at the moment, these are linked. So as I turn one, it turns the other. So if I turn the input down, it turns the output up. So it's trying to level match the plugin based on what we are doing. We can obviously override that. So that's with this link IO. So we can turn that off and then they are not linked and I can control them individually if I find that it's not working the way I want or I can link it again. So then we have our main control here, which is our console type. So we have a Brit 4KE, which is emulating an SSL 4000E channel. We have a Brit 4KG. So this is again, is an SSL 4000. It's a G channel or something like that. We have a USA, which is to emulate an API style console. We have a Brit N, which is emulating a Neve console. We have this symbol here, which is actually a Trident symbol. So it's emulating a Trident board. And then we have an RC tube, which is emulating a vintage style tube mixing console. 
We then have a drive control. So this is controlling how much of the characteristics and drive and distortion of this board is being added. By default, it sits at 6 dB. I usually pretty much just leave it there, but you can obviously reduce that and push it harder if you want to. We have group control here, so we can actually group items together, which I'll go into in a little bit. At the moment, I'll just leave it as is, as none. And we can bypass the entire group. And we have a noise reduction here. So I will generally turn the noise reduction on. So obviously these boards, because they're emulating proper consoles, have noise. That's just something that happened with analog equipment. It all, they always had a bit of noise. So to keep it true to the emulation, they included the noise in there. But thankfully, if you're someone that doesn't want that noise, they included a noise reduction so that you can remove or at least reduce the amount of that noise. So I'm sort of of the opinion that I don't mind emulating hardware, but I'm not really convinced that we need to emulate noise. I quite like turning that off because we're in a modern day now. It's still good to have a clean signal just with a bit of analog warmth. So I like to have the noise reduction on. So setting it up, as I said, is pretty simple. You just basically pick which console you want, set your drive if you want to change that, and you're done. Now, when we look at the Mix Bus version, it's pretty much identical. All the same settings, everything's the same, but it is designed to go on the Mix Bus level. So how do the groups come in? So this is something that you can do if you want to set up some sort of unique things and have the controls mirrored across your entire mix. So for instance here, if we just had a single setup here, we could set this to group one. We could set the mix bus to group one. And then what happens is any changes I make on one will be made on every other instance of this plugin that is set to that group. I can obviously bypass the entire group. I can change the drive, the input levels, and the console. Now you might say that's great, but I want to be able to set the individual I.O. per track because, you know, each track is going to be different in how loud or soft it is. So we can unclip, untick this group I.O. And then even though everything else is grouped, the I.O. is no longer grouped. So we can individually control the I.O., the input and output per track without affecting the group or we can have it on and then they all work together. So this can be really handy if you want to do different versions. So you could in theory have lots of groups in your mix. You could have a group here, which is say for your drums and they're all linked together. You could then set up a second group here, which could be for your guitars and you know, keys, etc. So that would be really handy if you wanted to have sort of emulate different mixing boards in the same mix. So if you wanted to have a Neve and you wanted to have an SSL, you could group them as different numbers and then you can control them across the board for all of these. Now, at the moment, I don't generally use the groups, but that's because I have a template that I have set up with the settings I want with the plugin on every track already set and because I don't generally change them I don't group them but it's a handy feature if you're someone that does like to group things there so I have a whole song here and as I said this is usually the virtual channel goes on a track what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have this channel on the entire song just to sort of show you what it does and give you some sounds and then what I'll do is I will even, I'll, I'll put the other one on as well and turn the channel off, then turn on the mix bus, show you that. So you can hear the difference between the two. 
and then I can even put them together so you can hear how they operate together across an entire song. Now let's switch over to the mix bus version. So even with the drive up 18, you can hear it's very subtle. It's extremely subtle plug in this one. Let's drop it back down. Let's go with about a 12 here. Now what I'm going to do is let's just group these together. And I'm going to turn them both on. Now, let's just see what we can do if we drive this pretty hard and see what effect we get with that.
So there you go. That's the VCC from Slate Digital. It's something I've been using for years. I really like it. As I said, it's very subtle, but uh, as you can tell there, not really pushing into the distortion. Obviously, that wasn't quite pleasant across an entire song, but you get the idea. But at those levels, when I was bypassing and unbypassing, you could clearly hear the difference. It's It adds just a little bit of something to the mix. It was a tiny bit deceiving because it was adding a little bit of a volume boost. So naturally, when you get a volume boost, it sounds better to your ears, naturally. So it's unfortunate from that point. Um, I guess I could have adjusted the output there. But there's still something going on there that uh, is pleasing to the ears. It opens the mix up a little bit, adds a little bit of texture to it. Now, you have to keep in mind that this song has already got this placed on it. So we're adding more on top of what was already there. So just keep that in mind because there's a lot of this already on those that track. But you would have clearly heard, heard that uh, it was having some impact. And each one of these consoles has a different sound to it. So it's very useful to play around with those. So there you go. There is the virtual console channel from Slate Digital. Let me know what you think of it. Do you use it? Have you tried a demo? Do you think it's worthwhile putting on or not? Do you see it as a bit of a, you know, uh, buzzword, snake oil, whatever you want to call it, and it's not really worth the money? I'd love to hear everybody's opinion on this. Or do you actually see the value in this and agree that there's enough there to justify why you would use it? Hopefully being an older video, hopefully the quality was still good enough. Hopefully it wasn't too boring and you got something out of it. If you did like it, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to be notified of all future videos. Hopefully it's been helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.